I can't believe it's been 14 years since The Incredibles, since the original film came out. It's too incredible to be true. <coughs> Booyah! Sorry, I had to throw that in there. Hey there everybody, this is Twain to Tiger Dude here and I am here to review Incredibles 2. Not THE Incredibles 2, just Incredibles 2. So, Incredibles 2 is written and directed by Brad Bird who also wrote and directed the original Incredibles. The film has a voice cast of Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, Samuel Jackson, Bob Odenkirk, and more. So Incredibles 2 literally picks up where the original ended, where the Parr family is trying to stop the Underminer. However, that doesn't go according to plan when they get themselves in trouble because superheroes are still illegal. But then this wealthy man wants to help superheroes become legal. He wants to show the public that superheroes can do a lot of good for the world and in order for that to happen he gets Elastigirl to basically become the face of the superheroes so Elastigirl is out there saving the world while Bob is left at home to take care of the kids so Incredibles 2 is a film I was so incredibly excited for for years I remember just seeing people begging for an Incredibles 2. We've had Toy Story sequels. We've had a Finding Nemo sequel. We've had a Monsters Inc. prequel. We've had the Cars sequels. We have all these sequels, but yet where is Incredibles 2? And, you know, it's because Brad Bird wanted to take his time. He did not want to make Incredibles 2 until he felt he came up with the right story. And you know what? I can respect that. And I do love Brad Bird as a filmmaker. He is one of the best directors and writers working today in my opinion. I'm a huge, huge fan of obviously the first Incredibles. I love the first Incredibles. I love Iron Giant. I love Ratatouille. And then I really enjoyed both Tomorrowland, which I know is kind of a mixed uh, opinion, but I actually really enjoyed Tomorrowland. And I really enjoyed Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. And I have to say, does Incredibles 2 disappoint? No, it does not. Honestly, I can say this is worth the 14 year wait. I loved Incredibles 2. This one actually tries to push forward the story of where the original film left off and it continues to expand on this incredible eh, world. It's a lot more different and when you're making a sequel you want to try to make it different. I thought Brad Bird did a pretty darn excellent job with the screenplay. He wrote the dialogue very well especially when it came to the family. I really love the scenes where we would see Bob, Helen, Violet, or Dash just interact with each other. It feels like you're watching a live-action movie because of how real the family dynamic is here. They don't try to add anything cartoony. There's no like zany like movements or anything you know the family walks like you would see them walk in a live action world and I think it absolutely has worked with these Incredibles movies and not only is the dialogue written well with the family and their interactions and I do love seeing them work together but when Frozone comes into play I thought he interacted very well with the family I thought Bob Odenkirk's character who I absolutely loved I thought he was great the way he talked to Elastigirl 
Girl and Mr. Incredible and Frozone. That was all really great. I think you all get the point of what I'm trying to say. I think the dialogue as a whole comes off as very natural. Nothing about it felt fake. Everything felt natural and it felt truly engaging in my opinion and not to mention that it's very clever. The humor here is truly incredible. No pun intended this time I promise. I have to say it's funnier than the first film. I thought the first film was funny. This one somehow managed to be even funnier than the first film. There were so many just amazing gags throughout this movie, especially since we're focusing on Bob trying to take care of the kids while Elastigirl's doing her own thing. And I have to say just right now, the story with Bob having to try to take care of the kids while Elastigirl is away, I loved that story. I thought there were a lot of funny moments regarding that story, but there's also heart. There's genuine heart, as you can expect. Now, both of these Incredibles movies, they're not the kind of movies that are gonna like make me weep and cry, like with something like Pixar's other movies, like Coco, or Wall-E, or Up, or Ratatouille, or the Toy Story movies. It's not gonna make me weep and cry like some of Pixar's other movies, but you do still feel that awe-ness to it. I did go awe a couple of times because the heart was just so well done. It was so sweet. And obviously because there's Jack-Jack too, which by the way, I will bring up in a little bit. I just loved everything about that story. And I have to say, as much as I do love Elastigirl's story, I actually might love this story more personally. And that's not dismissing Elastigirl's story because I will get a little more into that. But I just thought everything about this story was so well written. And now jumping forth to Elastigirl's story, I thought it was very exciting. The action sequences that come into play were very exhilarating. This has some of the best action sequences of the year, and this is an animated movie, keep that in mind. Yet, it has some of the best action sequences I've seen. It's so well written, it's so well directed, and Michael Giacchino's score just elevates the incredibleness to the action sequences. Michael Giacchino, he's the man, seriously. He knows how to compose music. I loved his score in The Incredibles and I loved it here in Incredibles 2. His score really fits this world. And I love how old school he makes these scores. These don't sound like your modern scores that you would hear in some movies. It feels old school. It feels like something you would hear in a spy movie. Uh, and it fits so well with these Incredibles movies. So Michael Giacchino has done it again. The score sounds absolutely incredible. And back to Elastigirl's subplot, I know I'm going, kind of going back and forth, but there's just so much to talk about with this movie. I thought her storyline was so riveting and I thought her character arc was just so interesting. And some of the things that she has to try to figure out while she is on this mission, I just found to be incredibly engaging. There's one point in this film, and you all know what I'm talking about, where it actually becomes legitimate creepy. It's a scene at this apartment, and everything about that scene was genuinely creepy. It actually had me shaking a little bit because of how creepy it was. And the fight sequence in that scene without spoiling anything just had me truly stunned. I loved Elastigirl. I thought Holly Hunter did a great job with her voice work. And I'll comment on the rest of the voice work right now, but I will say that Holly Hunter, you know, she hasn't lost that spark with Elastigirl, despite the fact it's been years since the original. When she came back into that recording studio, it felt like nothing has changed. It still felt like she was bringing to life that same character we know and love from First Incredibles, which was 14 years ago. It's nuts to even think about that but yeah incredible voice work on her part and now that I've already complimented Holly Hunter I gotta give credit to everyone else Craig T. Nelson as Mr. Incredible is just spot on he is top notch his voice work with this character is brilliant seriously pure brilliance 
with his character. His line delivery is just absolutely terrific. And the same could go to Violet Parr, who was voiced by Sarah Vowell. And I know Sarah Vowell voiced Violet in the original Incredibles. She still does a great job playing Violet here. I love the fact that I can understand why maybe some people will get annoyed with Violet in this film, but for me, I loved how Violet acted like that normal uh, mood swingy teenage girl and there's a lot of changes that's going through her right now so that felt very natural to me I thought some of the comedic timing with that played out very well and Dash as expected is truly awesome seriously I love Dash in the original and I loved him in Incredibles 2 as well and similar to Violet I can understand why some people might get annoyed with Dash. Personally, for me, I wasn't annoyed by him. He's just uh, played out as that natural kid, you know, like how any kid would act really. He's gonna be bratty, he's gonna be selfish, he's gonna be loud, and it's not done that obnoxious way like you would see in some movies here. It feels natural, similar to the changes Violet goes through in this movie. So yeah, he was still awesome here. I still loved him and I thought the voice work from Huck Milner was absolutely great. I thought he did a very good job uh, replacing the voice actor for the original film because obviously it's not going to really be the same voice actors. I forgot the name of the voice actor for the original Incredibles that voice dash but uh, I thought Huck was definitely a good replacement. It's similar to that kid that voiced Nemo in Finding Dory. Obviously, because of how young Nemo is, they had to change like voice actors. It's similar to really him when that voice actor had to come in and voice Nemo in Finding Dory. It's the same situation here, and I thought he did a really great job. Bob Odenkirk, who voices Winston, he is this rich and wealthy man, and he's the one that wants to to bring goodness into the superhero world. He wants superheroes to be recognized for the incredible work that they've done. And I thought he did a really great job with Winston, honestly. I couldn't really see anyone else voice this character. I thought Bob Odenkirk was perfect for this character. And I thought he did a truly terrific job. And as for Winston, I thought the character was great. And I loved how they gave him a great reason. Like they gave him a great driving reason for why he wants superheroes to be legal again and why he wants to show the public why superheroes can do good for this world. And obviously, I'm not gonna say why that reason is. You will have to find out for yourself whenever you watch this movie, or if you have already seen this movie, you know what I'm talking about. But I thought that was very impressive. And then there's these other superheroes that you meet in this film that have all these different abilities. There's a lot of them, so obviously I can't get to every voice actor one by one. But I do think that the voice actors that voice these other superheroes that we get introduced, I thought they did a very good job, honestly. I did really like them. And I did really like how in the climax in particular, without saying anything, they got to help out a little bit. Like they got to shine a little bit in the climax. Maybe not a whole lot. But in the climax in particular, they did get to shine a little bit. And as for the climax, I will say that was awesome. I will probably say I like the climax in the original film just a little bit more as far as like preferences. I do think the original had a slightly better climax, but that's not to really take away from the climax in Incredibles 2 because I still thought it was exhilarating, it was a lot of fun, and there's some nice little comedic moments that happen in between. So yeah, I thought the climax was honestly very well executed. I thought the majority of this movie was honestly very well executed. And when it comes to the overall direction, Brad Bird directed the hell out of Incredibles 2. Seriously, he did a truly fantastic job. He really did a great job of having me so immersed into this world, of really expanding this world. And the animation in Incredibles 2 is so gorgeous. It is a marvel to behold, honestly. I seriously think the animation is better than the animation in the original. When you look at the difference between the original's animation and the sequel's animation, 
the colors are a lot more brighter. This is a much more colorful movie than the original film. And don't get me wrong, the original film's animation, still to this day, is truly terrific. It still holds up very well, in my opinion. But they somehow just up the ante with the animation in Incredibles 2. It is just so gorgeous to look at. It's more detailed. I think it's because of how long it's been since the original. This definitely feels more detailed with its character designs, with the background of like the cities, just a lot of things were just incredibly well detailed. So to the animation department, excellent job with the animation. I have to also talk about Frozone in Incredibles 2 because one of my issues personally with the first Incredibles was that Frozone was very underused. Obviously he was great for what he had in the original but I thought he could have been the first film so much more and uh, it was a bummer for me like as much as I loved the first movie I did want more Frozone. The sequel fix that for me. The sequel gave me more Frozone. And Samuel Jackson, of course, he's great as his character. No one can voice Frozone like Samuel L. Jackson. But this character, I just love so much more here just because he has more to do. And I definitely don't want to say what he does. But I really did like in particular uh, what his part played for this film. So I'm definitely glad that on that part they definitely fixed that. Edna, as you can expect, she shows up. Not as much as the first film, however. But I still did really enjoy Edna. But the one character I'm sure all of you are waiting for me to just bring up is Jack-Jack. Jack-Jack, oh my god, was a adorable he is so so cute and i also did love the story when mr incredible and the kids bob i should say in this case he finds out about jack jack having like 17 different powers he goes to edna to kind of figure out the many powers that jack jack holds i thought that part of the story was also executed very well too it was very well written and although you don't get a lot of edna i thought there were a lot of comedic bits that went on when we did cut to Mr. Incredible visiting Edna for Jack-Jack. So that part of the storyline was very great. But yeah, Jack-Jack, he might actually be the show stealer with this film, honestly. As great as all these characters are, I think Jack-Jack uh, truly is the show stealer, honestly. He was just so adorable, so cute. And I did love his many powers that he got to use throughout this film. At the end of the first film, we knew that he had powers, but we weren't so sure what he really holds by the end of that first film. This sequel absolutely explores what his powers are. They didn't ignore that Tony character from the first film because you know how sometimes with sequels they tend to ignore characters from its previous installments. No, Incredibles 2, I have to give this movie a lot of props. It forgets nothing from the original film. Tony as a character is actually surprisingly pretty important regarding Violet's life. And I like that it did continue on the events of the original film as far as them going on their date. You know, little things like that in Incredibles 2, even though we have the exciting action sequences going on, and like the stuff with the family or just Elastigirl doing her thing by herself. Like even though you have exciting sequences like that, little moments like the stuff with Jack-Jack or Dash or Violet or even that little story with Violet and Tony. That is definitely what makes this stand out because as much as we do love the action, I think people admire these movies more for the family dynamic and for real life situations a lot of people go through. I think that's why a lot of people speak to these films because of how much they can relate to these characters because I'm sure a lot of them have gone through situations like this at one point in their lives. It's something that kids can relate to, teenagers can relate to, and adults can relate to. I think that is truly the beauty of these Incredibles movies. Now, as much as I do love Incredibles 2, there are some issues that I do have with this movie. And I will just go ahead and say what my biggest issue is just straight off the bat. 
the antagonist. I thought the antagonist was really weak to be honest and this antagonist does not hold a candle to Syndrome in the original Incredibles. In the original Incredibles, Syndrome was very compelling. You may not agree with his, with his decisions, but as a character, you can honestly understand why he feels the way he did in the original. And in some sorts, you actually felt bad for the character, even if you didn't agree what he did. He had a great backstory to him, and he had a legitimate driving motivation to him. And that's what made that character so memorable in the first film. When it came to this character, and the writing of this character, I will say, this is probably the weakest in terms of like Brad Bird's screenplay. This is the part of the screenplay I will say was rather weak from him. It's how this character was written. It was very generic. There's nothing incredibly special about this character's motivation. I don't even think this character is that great, to be honest. Like seriously, the minute the movie introduces this character, I immediately went, this character is gonna be, you know, screenslaver. Like, they made it so, so obvious. I already knew this character was gonna be screenslaver before Elastigirl figured it out. I wish that part of the screenplay was unpredictable, but I have to be honest, that's the most predictable element in the screenplay. I did not really care about the character that happened to be screenslaver at all, to be honest. Also, this film is two hours long. It's almost two hours long, like maybe like by a couple of minutes. It's almost at the two hour mark. And there were a few points where I did feel the pacing drag, where I do think they could have picked up the pace a little more. And I can understand you want to slow down, tell your story, but there was a point with the setup where I did feel a drag and there were a couple of points regarding Elastigirl where I was like, okay, this definitely feels slow. I do feel the movie dragging just a little bit. Edna, this is not really a major issue or anything, but I do think we could have got maybe one or two more scenes with Edna and I think it could have been good. She only shows up for literally two scenes. I even counted. Edna is only in this movie for two scenes and granted while they are really great scenes I do wish she had a little bit more to do and when it comes to the climax even though it's very exciting it's very entertaining it had me at the edge of my seat I do think towards the end of the climax like as we get towards the end it did feel a little bit rushed in my opinion and this is probably more of a nitpick really but i wasn't a fan of void's character design sophia bush does a good job with the character and even the character herself is actually pretty cool but the character design itself i wasn't really a fan of just didn't quite blend with this world in my opinion but like I said, that's me being nitpicky at this point. Overall, Incredibles 2 is terrific. This is a great movie with terrific screenwriting from Brad Bird, amazing direction by Brad Bird as well, colorful and brighter animation that is hard to take your eyes off of, the family dynamic is executed so well, I found myself so engaged with the family dynamic, especially once it's Bob taking care of the kids, I thought there were a lot of funny moments but also a lot of heart to that as well. I do think the original film is just slightly, and I'm talking slightly slightly better but really when it all comes down to it I love the sequel as much as really the first film I just do think the first film is a little bit better and that's really because of that having a better villain but still Incredibles 2 absolutely delivers it's one of the best films I've seen this summer and this year and I'm going to give Incredibles 2 the same rating I gave the Incredibles which is three and a half out of four stars so everybody in the comments down below let me know what did you think about Incredibles 2 did you love the Incredibles did Incredibles 2 deliver for you was it the sequel you wanted to be please let me know in the comments down below this is 22 Tiger Dude here and don't forget that I will always have 
tiger power. Da, na, 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 na.